Hello and welcome to another part of the post-production chapter here in the texture series. And today I want to show you how to unpeel an apple just with the camera. The idea here is, as in the previous episodes, not to show you the step-by-step -step in Photoshop. This is a course for medium-skilled users or for pros. And so I don't want to bother you with how to hold a pencil or to use the stamp tool, of course. What I want to do here is to introduce you to a method how to use Cinema 4D to your advantage when you have objects that are not really easily to peel with the camera. And for that, we need to take a look to the whole idea behind it. And so I go with two previous steps and then we go to the main method here. To explain the first step is, of course, pretty straightforward. I only need to go here to this scene. And when we take a look here around, then we can see here already that we have a huge patchwork here. And the whole idea was not to create from the start a nice texture here. The idea was here to just show you what happens if we take all these eight shots, for example, from the equator of the apple and patch them around with camera mapping. And do the same trick, of course, for the top and the button. And again, the idea was here not to create anything that is usable. It was more to show exactly when we reproject a texture to a similar geometry, we get an undistorted texture here. And that is the first step in understanding the whole method that I want to present here. We have, of course, discussed how we would stitch all these equators in one row so we get a tileable texture at least in the horizontal area but when we have an object like a sphere or an apple we have to take a little bit more care about the pole caps here of course that is nothing that we have normally with a tree and we have way more to deal with distortion here and of course we could just go ahead and find similarities stretch it and do it just by eyeballing it I want to give you, of course, another method different to the tree where we had some pins in as orientation. This time we have Cinema 4D as our guide here. We can divide here, of course, the problem into two main areas. The equator, which we will discuss separately, and the two pole caps. And the two pole caps, when I have here my pre-selected equator textures, I can use here the selection with an X in it. And I have no selection that is called X. So when I click here, I can see only the two pole caps here. And I have prepared this, of course, a little bit more cleaner. And you can see here the two cameras. And, and we can see here the two cameras that are responsible now to project the top and the button of the apple. And of course, you might say, wait a moment, they are not exactly in an axis. So yes, the apple has moved while I was rotating it and the camera was stationary. Now we have to deal, of course, only with one apple. That means I have to balance out the cameras now for the movement of the one apple. And that results, of course, in exactly this. Pressing the S key to get here my apple in full view. Then you can see here I have not even lined up the apple. And you can see here I have the shadow area where the apple was laying on the little chair. And I have here the shadow area. Not very precise, but I don't care here at the moment because I can fix this later. For the idea that I want to share with you, I need only this area here very clear and from the button as well this area. Do I think that this apple here, the sphere, is a good representation of an apple? and that we get the most precise representation of the texture finally from it? No, I don't think so. I certainly believe that this is the fastest way to create a spherical projection image that we can use on many apples with different shapes. So we have two steps to do to get finally to the method that I want to suggest to you. The first step is, of course, to get now a spherical panorama from the two pole caps. And for that, and I switch here my spherical apple off, I have here a smaller sphere inside. And you can see I have here tons of segments. I have changed only the size and the amount of segments. Then I have created here a chrome material. And that is a material that has only the reflections on, no Fresnel or anything. It's just 100% pure reflectivity. 
that's a very important part. This goes to the small sphere here, should be always smaller than the main actor here in the scene. And then we have here in back texture tag, and this results normally here in tags, in Mafo-D tags, very big texture. So when we have this here established, then we can take a look in the attributes manager and the tags that I have done here something that I normally try to avoid f with all costs to work in 8-bit <laughs> and SL3B and very low resolution. So what's wrong with me now? Nothing is wrong because this was the setting for the last step here. I have done this, of course, have tested everything, that it works fine. So now we talk about checkerboards, and you might think he gets nuts because we want to have an apple here and not checkerboards. When we open this, I have here in the color just a gradient, and the gradient has here for the pole caps red and blue, and then I have a gradient for the equator. And in the luminance, I have here in checkerboard 8x8, and this gives me now exactly here this result, so I know roughly where I am. Red and checkerboard is the button pole cap and the bluish pole cap here on top is the top of the apple and everything in the gradient with the checkerboard green and bluish is then the equator panorama so to say. So when I go now here with my sphere inside and go to my back texture then I can go here to options. And in options, I have only the reflections on, nothing else. And I have to scroll here up. Let's make a preview here, just quick and easy. Then I get here a panorama that is exactly straight here. Hmm, that looks simple. But in the moment I switch this off here, just with an X or whatever letter you like to have, because then I keep every setting here, except that the texture tag is ignored. When I go here again to my little guy, scroll up again, preview. Now I get here my pole caps as panorama. So I have a relation here already. I know pretty much that these pole caps here have now these very complicated distortion because this little point where I have my mouse pointer is now stretched here over the whole area. By the way, I have rendered these pole caps of course with a way higher resolution and in the bit depths that I want to have. Normally I prefer 32-bit, but of course Photoshop is relatively limited, so 16-bit, if I have no better material, is fine. If I work with HDRI, 32-bit is mandatory. So I render out the panorama in the resolution that I need for the pole caps, and I render out the little checkerboard as small as I like to, because we need only the geometry information on it, the checkerboards by itself. It's not the precision that we need for that. So then here in Photoshop, and I have used your just demo material, I have, you know, my two pole caps. And as I said, they are not exactly on top of each other. So I have to figure out how they match finally. I could just take here one patch of my panorama and what I want to do is of course to split this in two parts and then I can go ahead here just and move one with the offset differently than the other one and until they match in the way they should. And I think this is close to be matching here. It could be maybe that I have here, the texture and there. That's of course up to you how you finally adjust this. But you get the idea. I just can go ahead here and rotate this with filter and offset independently now. And of course no vertical shift here. That would be counterproductive. Zero for vertical and everything else here just in the horizontal way. So I can move this texture here around. Works fine and I can adjust this. But this is maybe a little bit for later, so I switch this off here. Oops. <laughs> and I want to show you, of course, here the panel that I have done. This is now stretched for the whole area. I have this here in a smart object. It's not needed, but it's nicer to have that in that way. So now I know exactly how the whole texturing needs to be for my panorama here for the equator area. Now comes the really important part to understand. When I go now back to my scene, 
where I have these two pole caps, I switch on my texture here again, if that is not already on. And you can see here now exactly the curves that the checkerboard creates with this view. And this point of view is relatively exact the distance that I had during my apple shoot. And you can see the ratio here is in the same way. My limitations of going closer with the lens or getting it sharp closer has finally resulted in this lot of space here that I waste, but on the end I get an 8K texture. I know that already, so I'm pretty happy about all of that. I'm not unhappy about the waste here. So when I render this now out here as a picture, then I know exactly this will be relatively parallel to my apple. So do I have to do this now for all eight shots? No, because the distortion and the distance will be the same. That is why I have used here just a sphere. I unify here pretty much everything, and that means I simplify as well. But as I said, I want to use this texture finally on many different shaped apples. And so I go here with this flow and let's hop over to Photoshop again. So I have now here exactly my image from the spherical apple with the texture on it, with the checkerboards. And what I want to show you here is the procedure. So please don't get bothered by the 8-bit or something like that. It's the method here. What I do first is to create here just a smart object. That means I have now something like a container. What I want to have here is of course some lines, one in the middle. And then I want to have here two rows exactly in the way I have that. So I go here maybe in this position and here in this. And it's up to you how you want to organize your work here. I hope it's visible enough. So the next part is, as it is in a smart object, I use the command T now to get here a distortion running. And I go to this little icon here, then I can go here very heavily to my work. And I do this here now relatively sloppy just to get the point across. So you can see here, I get the middle part where I'm after already relatively straight again. So move these points a little bit in. And before I got here completely crazy with this, because it can take some time to make it really precisely, you see already that I have now here this area relatively rectangular. And I can overdo this here in a huge way. And you see already how far we can stretch this now. Of course, every stretch is a limitation of the quality. But the more I do this here in one step, the better I'm off. And I have to move this here. And you see, I'm already fiddling here around and wasting your lifetime. Sorry for that, but you get here the idea. We have a rectangular now. So when I press now return, I get here something that is relatively rectangular. Again, with more time, I would have more success with this. When I double click now here on this guy, I open a new window here. And then I can place here maybe a new object on top of that. And I want to show you something here with maybe red lines, just something like this, red and go. So this is a little bit too big. I go now exactly along these lines here. So I save this now. I stay always in that smart object and then I'll go back and you see the lines are relatively straight now. And that's the whole process. I understood exactly what I need here for this image because I need straight lines here with the aid of my image that I have created in Cinema 4D. And every time I need a new one, I just open my smart object, put a new Apple view from this in. So I have to do it eight times, make a copy and then rasterize this. What I will do here now, just drag this on this icon here, switch this off go to layers, smart object and rasterize because they are all connected when they are copies. And now I have here one copy and I can open this file here again. And this time I take another color and I take a little bit of time here to show you really the result. And I can make here a cross inside, relatively straight lines, save it and you get already the idea. The workflow is simple. You open the smart object, place a new image in, close it, the undisturbing part happens automatically, save it, 
copy it and the copy becomes rasterized and placed then into the panorama. Just to make that point a little bit clearer back and forth. So with this idea in mind, I go now here back to my main file and I have done exactly this with this stripe here. And I double click this here, then my smart object will open. And here I have exactly what I have shown you before. This object here, and I leave this now on because we had apples before, as you have seen, the stripes. And always a new one, render it, save it. And when it is saved, click and now we have here no apple anymore. We have the stripes here and we can't see that very well. So this is now not the peel anymore. It's the texture that we had before. Double click on it, bring back the apples or one of them, save it out, update the main and we have our apple stripe here back again. So I have done this, of course, many times and Finally, I got here all these guys here in a row. So I have everything relatively nicely understood. Maybe I put them all away for a moment and then you can see step by step what I have done here. Just like this. See here, it works relatively nicely. And this was the demo file just for the sake of going here one time through it with JPEGs in 8-bit to get really the idea. And then we have already our panorama. So I can switch this off here. And this panorama here gives me then something where I can work on with the masks. And then I just switch on here my two pole caps and I have already my texture. And you can use, of course, this technique on many other objects that have similar shapes or you can maybe even go with this method here where we have all of these guys then on completely different objects and take your measurements then because it's not always as simple as a sphere. And that's the whole idea here to get exactly what we wanted to have in the first place. Okay, so now we have unpeeled the whole apple with the aid of Cinema 4D and I think it worked out very fast and quick with these few steps that we had. Pole caps, equator panorama, and then merge everything together. And with all the lighting problems that I had created with not revolving the apple always to the same spot, I think I'm not that bad with these results here. Which brings us finally back to say, this is the result. And I have, of course, here created a model with the magnet tool and with hypernobs, I get here a nice surface on top of that. And that's pretty much all I want to tell here. I say thanks for listening. Have fun with it. Bye bye.